All right. Preparing the live stream. Going live. Got it. You could go to a group, but it's like you must have permission. What's up, everybody? We are going live today in an episode of Create, Launch, Monetize podcast. I'm here with my amazing bearded co-host, Anthony Frank. What's up, my dude? What's up, all? How y'all doing? What's up, man? How you doing, John? Dude, I'm, I'm pumped, dude. I'm doing freaking amazing. So I'm excited for this episode. We've been talking a couple of times about speaking and how to build, create, launch, and monetize podcasts and speaking and businesses and all that stuff. And man, I just, I love, I freaking love um, all that stuff that we're talking about because a lot of times, and I think you see it too, people are searching and searching and searching and searching and they get like a thousand different answers, you know, in the, um, in their business for speaking. And then there's so many different, like, let's say you go to a podcast group, like, well, what microphone should I use? Well, the microphone you should use is one, two, 80, 70, you know, different microphones. So how do you weed through all that? You know, how do you figure out what's right for you? What, I mean, if you ask any question in a group, it's going to give you 16 different answers. And now you've just confused the person even more. Yeah. Interesting outlook. I think there's a, uh, there's definitely enough content in the world to tell you 40 different microphones to pick to start podcasting. <laughs> or you could just pick up your smartphone like I'm doing right now and just do it. Um, right. And I would, I would say the better you want your quality, the better you're going to get a good camera and a good microphone to film with. And if not, you're just going to roll with what you got. For sure. Yeah. yeah, man, for sure. I think, I think I bought the Logitech C920. I do like mm -hmm. that camera as a streaming camera. At one point I had not used it in so many years that I just gave it away to someone, <laughs> uh, you know, I have the really cool stand that holds your phone. Yep. Whatnot. And it holds it two different ways. I forget the name of the company that makes it, but mm -hmm. um, they sold them for a long time in like the 2015, 16, 17 era. So again, I don't travel with that, right? I've moved my way towards minimalism in my life to where I remove as many things that I don't need to own or keep or manage or hold, right? Mm -hmm. to, the, to, to the least amount of things, right? And that's what we are leading into today. It's like, how do you get to the nuts and bolts of doing X, Y, Z things as a speaker? So I think where we left off was like, we talked to you a lot about the different aspects of why you should speak, how you could go about speaking, whether it's paid or free. And then we left off at like, hey, we'll talk to you about the marketing side of promoting and creating a speaking career for yourself like Sean has done. Exactly. Um, and so I guess, yeah, in this episode of create launch, progress, <laughs> in this episode of create launch monetize podcast, we're going to talk to you about the marketing part, how to get booked, the great storytelling that speakers use, who the key players are, because I have a rule to be successful in any arena that you're playing in, you must number one understand and know the rules of the arena you're playing in and who the star players are, who the key players are. You have to know. Then after you can identify those things, it's then that you create your space, you become the subject matter expert, you know, the category king like Christopher Lockhead talks about that we always talk about and how. A lot of times, you know, we like we're going to Facebook groups. I want to do this. I want to do this. People are like, oh yeah, just do it this way. You're fine. They don't talk about the how. They always talk about in selling, talk about the value, sell the how, give away the what, sell the how. 
our episode's a little bit different. We give it all away, which <laughs> then in turn kind of brings more value, brings more clients, brings more revenue, you know, which is a byproduct of, of the value that you deliver. I firmly believe that. So today we'll talk about the storytelling, identifying the players, how to get yourself recorded, what to use, how to use it, quotes, texting, marketing, lead magnet from stage. Options. Lead magnet. See, this is this is your realm, man. The lead magnet. You know, but let's like just the, start off that. with where it's the wheelhouse. Like at the end of the day, what's the the reality from going from a speaker to a paid speaker? And the things that you actively do all the time to continue to get paid speaking gigs. Okay. That's really where it's at. Right. So let's start there. Okay. How I actively get booked. We'll start there. How I actively get booked is two ways. I guess it's always two ways passively and then aggressively. So one way aggressively or reaching out or whatever is my favorite website is the directory of associations.com. You go there, you search your state, you find the associations that are there and you literally reach out to the president or there's a committee or there's an executive director. If you contact the, the association president or the executive director, they're going to tell you, here's the script. Hi, Anthony saw that you are, the president or the executive director of the creating websites association. I create websites, but in a completely different way, would love to speak to your group about ABC and the value that I deliver has gotten my clients, my people, my community, my whatever to X amount of whatever the results are. Not sure if you're having events, not sure what your process is for booking speakers, but would love to enter into that conversation. Thank you. That's it. It's not in 1999, you know, and like this <laughs> six freaking paragraph email. Here's my bio. Here's my one sheet, which I think one sheets are dead. Just saying. People spend so much time on one sheets. It's ridiculous. It boggles my mind. But that's the conversation. This is what I do. This is my value proposition. This is the value I deliver. Would love to enter into a conversation. Not a six paragraph not a bio, not a one sheet, not like a bunch of, cause it's going to get deleted. Nice. That's Love. one way association or the director of associations.com passively. It's giving value all the time. And then a call to action, like a post. So let's say that I want to speak at a podcast event. Everybody got this podcast. Me and Anthony Frank are crushing it. We've got 6,500 downloads plus in about 14 episodes. People love our podcast. This is what it's about. Would love to know who's booking speakers for podcast events. All right. So, I mean, I'm just letting it happen. You know, who, who's booking them? Who do I talk to? And then they'll tag people like, oh, this guy's speaking and this guy, you know, whatever. Another way that I actually reach out is searching. This is, this is gold hashtag call for speakers on Facebook and LinkedIn because a lot of the event planners will hashtag call for speakers. And then you look at that and go, okay, yeah, I can speak to that. Or no, I can't speak to that. You just reach out to the poster, reach out to the person who posted that thing and say, Hey, saw that you have an event coming up. Noticed your hashtag call for speakers. What is your booking process? I'd love to speak at your event. One passive way of doing it is to go to google.com forward slash alerts, set up a Google alert in quotes that says call for speakers. And anytime a call for speakers is posted on the internet, Google scrapes it and sends it into your email. That's a passive way to get emails directly leads directly into your email that you have to do nothing. You do nothing. I have TEDx. I have call for speakers. I have call for proposals. I have another one that's called for papers. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of like media, but it's sometimes events will put out call for papers and it's kind of their way that like you do the proposal because they want you to write the proposal to see if you're going to be a good speaker or whatnot. So that's a bunch of ways to get bookings or to find them. Cause the number one question I get is how do I find events that people are looking to book speakers for? 
And those ways right there are the number one ways I use. Nice. Excellent. Another thing you can do, again, I never was a paid speaker. I, I just used uh, speaking as an opportunity to leverage me in front of people as an expert to help them solve the problem uh, and teach because I love to teach. So something that I saw as an opportunity was helping someone else who wanted to speak and have an event and then going there and assisting them and in, in executing that week after week. We used to do bi-weekly, so twice a month. And then I did that for long enough that they let me go speak. Mm. Um, and then from there, that was like, hey, uh, I went to the local library, started speaking there. Uh, another way you could do it is to go to other people's events, connect with them, and find out opportunities to speak at their meetups or their event rights or their whatever's, right, local things. Um, all of these ways propel you to what we talked about in the previous episode, which is get yourself video, good quality video, good quality audio, good quality lighting of you speaking anywhere you're speaking in front of people or on a stage or at a luncheon. All of that is proof, visual proof yep. to other people that can help them get to know what you're like, what you believe, the things you're speaking about, and they can imagine themselves having you at their event, yep. which leads you to your speaker reel, right? Speaker reel, powerful, yep. powerful piece of content that if you don't have a good one, it's not advantageous to you as somebody aspiring to be a speaker and market yourself as a speaker. Um, without going too far off track, Sean, let's go to our list because we have a fat list of things to cover. <laughs> Promises Sean made at the beginning that we will cover right now. I will say that if you don't have great video, you may not get booked. This, the, the one sheet, I believe, is dead. It just is. I have never, ever, ever since 2016 ever been booked because of a one sheet i've been booked because of the value i deliver and i've been booked because of the video of me speaking how i did that at first in 2016 is i went to a library i rented a room i brought three outfits and my wife videoed me giving three different parts of my talk in three different outfits in three different parts of the room and then I kind of crammed it together. I gave it to my videographer. I said, make me a cool video. He did. I started using that. And then each clip that got recorded got changed out from the original video until I had all kinds of videos. So Beautiful. just saying that's, that's a great way to, to, to do all that. The first thing I want to talk about is the old famous saying, man, facts tell and stories sell. How important is it to have amazing storytelling in your talk? I think what I've learned over time in speaking is the story is what makes it sticky, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the story is what opens up opportunity to connect with people on emotional levels, uh, things that they can relate to either themselves or that they've seen in their lives. Uh, mm -hmm. And then yeah. that leads to songs, which is on our list. And we talked about this a little bit in the past episode. Uh, Greg Reed is exceptionally good at writing what he calls his songs. It's like his stories in little three to five to eight minute bites that he can string together to tell a speech mm -hmm. that's 30 minutes or 45 minutes or 15 minutes yeah. uh, that teach lessons. And each one of those songs teaches the lesson uh, and it's based in a story format. Um, powerful. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I think the way, because some, some people teach that you open up with a question in your talk, questions open hearts and minds. What I see a lot of from new speakers is they come on stage and they say, wow, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. I want to thank the event planner. I want to thank you. This is what I love to do. And here's a little bit about me. I'm sorry, man. Nobody cares. Nobody cares where you came from or what you did or what, just get right into the content. It's great 
backstory that you can weave strategically into your talk. But to just come out with, here's a little bit about me. I graduated high school and then I went on to do this one thing and then I did this one thing. Like, cut all that out. Have an amazing <laughs> story in the beginning. You could open yeah. up, like, I, I always open up with questions. I always do. I always open up with three questions. The third one's always funny. It's always rhetorical. It always gets a laugh because you have to make them laugh in the first 15. You have to get a reaction. Let's put it that way. Cry, laugh, not anything negative to cheer something. You have to get audience participation and get a reaction in the first 15 to 30 seconds. You just have to. But going into a backstory or what we call in podcasting, the origin story, people just don't care. But you have to have amazing storytelling. And you can weave the stories throughout. So you can open up with a question, go into like kind of a story. I heard a story one time. It was so amazing. Guy was basically talking about going to a nursing home. He was going to see his old baseball coach. He sits there with them, you know, a couple of times a week. They share stories, you know, whatever. At the end of the talk, he says, I remember the last time I saw my baseball coach at that nursing home. I told my dad and everyone was like, oh, you know, like it was this whole, we thought it was just a baseball coach. We thought it was just like, he was connected. It was actually his dad. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Making the ha -ha. Was, uh -huh. And you get the, oh, you know what I mean? Like we did not see that coming. I loved it. I told him, I was like, that's great. That's genius. Cause you talked about the baseball coach and the lessons you learned. But at the end you said, I remember the last time I saw my baseball coach, I told my dad in that moment, and I was like, oh, and it pulled at your heartstrings. <laughs> you know, I was like, yes, absolutely. So there's people, there's ways that, that some people do that, that sometimes open. Like I, when I coach TEDx speakers who want to be on TEDx, I tell them like open with a powerful story, an emotional story, a startling story or a fact or a discovery. And one of the people I coached, she opened up with brilliant. She has two TEDx talks. She opened up with, I don't know about you, but I used to eat out of trash cans. Before we get to that story, I want to welcome everybody. And I want to talk about this one thing. Everyone's like, what? Like what? And I told her, like, just bypass it. Just blow it off. And then she came back to it. And it, it made it for a really, really powerful TEDx talk. That's what some people do. I want to talk about those other key players. What do you think about some of the speakers that are like really at the top? Like, like who I guess comes to mind or, or how do we identify the key players? Who are the superstars? <laughs> Christopher Lockhead. Yeah. Your volume dropped off. You hear me? There you go. Okay, say again, Christopher Lockhead. The new shout out to the newsletter. I, I saw a post the other day, and he was like, "Starbucks called it Vente for a reason." I was like, yeah. "Oh, I have a new respect for this Vente versus large thing." Like, right. And then the article is great. So, but to get back to your point, people that are extremely good at speaking on stage may not necessarily be the ones you've seen speak the most. Some of them might be extremely good at selling from stage. Mm -hmm. um, and it depends your intent. Like for me, speaking was always a platform in which to help other people lift them up and then create opportunities at the same time so that people got to know me, they were in my network. And if they wanted to do business together, they knew there was an opportunity to have a conversation about that. Um, so when you're on the, on the paid speaking side, people can do lots of different things from the stage and their opening, get up on stage, first thing they say, sec segment. Um, and like you're saying, I've seen extremely good people that sell well, and it's not what happened in the beginning of the speech. It was the entire thing choreographed all the way through. And the most powerful part was them actually demonstrating what they were going to give you, the opportunity to get your hands on which was like assistant help outside the country in India and in the Philippines mm. and how it would, how it would look, feel, and actually work 
to have someone working for you that was remote. And during the speech, they demonstrated that through Skype and they gave them an assignment to do. And then from there, they went on with the speech and they told a couple stories before and after. And that's what kept everybody in through the demonstration. And then they pitched at the end. One of the best pitches I've ever seen. Not going to say who it was, but extremely awesome, dude. And uh, there's also the the stun you right you kind of touched on the stun you thing like some kind of stun you thing and then hey how's it going everyone welcome so glad that you're here or some type of rapport and then from there it's like before open a loop before i get into whatever i just talked about let me tell you a story about myself and now it's connection and communication connection and communication is important and the story lets you do that that's the platform to do that Mm -hmm. Um, but i have heard the stun you thing right the stun you gets their attention then you say something you ask them a question that can get them to lean in and then sean hit on another one his third question is always something that's either rhetorical and funny or just funny right because if you can get them to laugh they can take down some of the barrier to learn yep um those are all powerful So, and it depends on the size of the audience. Like when, when I'm in a room of 20 to 50 people, uh, closer to 20 is easier to ask them all, Hey, give me a, uh, welcome everyone. So glad that you're here. I'm excited to learn and teach with you. All of the things that I'm going to share are boom, 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 boom. Uh, before we get started, let's go around and let you stand up and just tell me who you are and uh, what you do. Or, uh, you know, a question I used to ask on my podcast all the time was uh who are you what do you believe in and why do you do what you do Mm -hmm. right that was the opening question it's like but if you're in a room full of strangers that came to your class that's a tough question to ask them because they're going to get bogged down so it's just something it's like hey introduce yourself tell me a little bit about yourself who you are uh, a little bit about your business and why you came to the class or whatever they're not going to answer all of them but at least they'll give you a little blurb the less people the more intimate it feels to have the opportunity to do something like that when you get anywhere close to like 50 to 90 especially if it's not your event obviously you're not going to be able to go around the room to everybody so then you go with like sean was saying like hey welcome everyone so glad that you're here and then you ask them a question like who's ready to do xyz thing that you came to do this week like how many of you ever thought about this and then boom he asked them the funny question mm-hmm and now, now you're winning them over. They took some barrier down. They, they've thought you've, you've stopped them in their tracks with the opening thing, you know, and then they thought about it. They're ready. And then you ask them something funny. They laugh and now they're kind of on your side. And now you're telling them a story. Like to me, that's a great framework to follow. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen people master that and it just makes for a very, very fun presentation. One of the best speakers, you know, everybody talks about like Les Brown, and Gary B and Grant Cardone, like all these like, you know, phenomenal people, high level, like they're always going to look at those people. I think there's great speakers that hardly anybody knows. I think one of the best speakers that I've seen, my speaker coach and mentor, John Vroman, host of the Front Row Dads podcast, Front Row Factor book, Front Row Foundation, Amazing. And the way that he tells stories and weaves them in and brings the audience on a journey with him and yet gives tangible tips that you could, I mean, just feverishly writing down like, yeah, that's great. Like, oh my gosh. And his, his one liners, like his, his mind blowing content where he says something he said one day, he's like, my whole purpose as a dad is to see my kids is not who they are, but who they can become. And most people would just move on from that. But the way that you deliver it, and he slows it down. My purpose as a dad is to not see my kids at who they are, but who they could become. And leave it there. Most people want to move on and, and just get through their talk. Leave it there. And, and he, he taught me that. He's like, you got to leave it there. You got to hit them and then leave it there and let them soak that moment in. 
And he says, you look for the head nods. And when you see head nods, stop. Don't go any further. Just stop and maybe count to three or four. And just count in your head. And then move on and go. Because they're soaking that in. That was a moment for them. And as a drill instructor back in 2009, I learned about inflection. I learned about projecting your voice, you know, the pitch, everything about speaking qualities and, and voice qualities, which then goes into storytelling as well, which goes into what we wanted to talk about here was that your audience is not only the people in the seats watching, but everyone in your social media network that may or may not have had the chance to see you speak in person yet. A lot of people think that speaking engagements are just you on stage. A stage is right now. We're on stage. We're in live right here in the Podcasters Collective Facebook group. Shout out to Tom Hartman and shout out to the members of the group, the Podcasters Collective, and Sarah Von Berenborg who has graciously allowed us to come in here along with Tom Hartman. And we're, we're live on a stage. This technically is a stage. We're also live in my Facebook profile, which I have tagged you on. And then we're live on the Create Launch Monetize Facebook page. This is technically a stage. Podcasting is a stage. And then you have your live stages. You have your virtual stages. A Facebook live that you do in your backyard could be a stage for you. So I'd love for you to kind of talk about that point because that's huge. We're definitely on a stage and, and think about the dynamic of if we took away the video, different podcasting stage, more intimate in the ear podcasting versus, Hey, we're going to repurpose this into something you can listen to on any podcatcher you choose. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and shout out to Sean. We're, we're almost at the 10,000 downloads mark on the podcast. So I think we're long overdue for a little website that, that I can build for us. <laughs> so people can actually listen to them on our website if they choose right. to. But uh, shocked and uh, appreciative of all the audience listening and sharing and enjoying and leaving reviews for the content um, we give selflessly for you, Sean, much more than myself. I, uh, it's not that I give less selflessly. I just have more personal things going on in my life that I enjoy spending time doing that yeah. I don't really take myself out of that pocket very often. Uh, and he's patient with me on that. But we're going to yeah. work on delivering <laughs> for the audience in a nice way. Because we're yeah. damn near 10,000 downloads, which should say something. Kudos to Sean. And, and like 14 and episodes. And this would be like episode like 15, you know. There we so. go. Yeah. Very cool. And, and, you know, one thing we might have left out of the first segment, people that are, are maybe known, but only to, let's say, a couple million people and not hundreds of millions of people. Mm. Uh, Bill Walsh, extremely good, uh, well-polished speaker that has a lot of good uh, in audience engagement. So... Audience yep. engagement from the stage is awesome. Getting people to stand up, getting them to commit to things, getting them to communicate with you, to communicate with each other, to like he says things like turn to the side and you know, give someone a high five. Tell them you look great, but I look better. And, and it, <laughs> all that stuff is fun, right? It, it makes it yeah. lighthearted and and enjoyable. And it's not just like, hey, you're gonna sit in this chair and listen to us talk for an hour. He's very good at like having a wonderful time. Uh, Michael Griffiths, extremely good speaker yes. at getting people to commit to things through communication and having letting them have the aha moments in their head of the idea based on how he phrases and says things to them that he's trying to get them to adopt and understand as a positive for what they're trying to achieve. Um, really good speaker. Pat Bet David, good speaker. Holy good speaker. cow, yeah. Oh, he's powerful. You know, really good speaker. Uh, and now he's running ads for his vault event. Really good ads, right? And mm -hmm. they're always a story, mm -hmm. right? So those speakers that want to get out there, get yourself speaking on stage. Get those videos, as many of them as you can. Best quality video, best quality audio, best quality lighting that you can get every single time you're on stage. Cut those together. Put them out there. Take from those lessons and stories, write long form, write short form, pull excerpts out of it. Those could be tweetables. They could be 
quote memes. They could be things that you know. Talk about the people that influenced you um, that you want to associate your brand with. Uh, identify the players that have groups that have people that you could go speak to, right? They already have an audience. Go attend some of those events. Find out if you could speak at one of them. Especially easy to do with a meetup group. If you go to a meetup group a few times, you get to know the people that host it. Mm-hmm. They might very well be looking for speakers to speak if you're the expert for their audience. Um, yep. Especially now that events are coming back, right? All this stuff is coming back. Most people are either getting vaccinated or in my mind, if they're not getting vaccinated, then they're comfortable with not being vaccinated. And it shouldn't be a big deal either way. Like I personally didn't want to get vaccinated, but I'm going to Hawaii. And I know <laughs> they either want you to be vaccinated or they want you to spend a bunch of time sitting around in quarantine. So I'll just be vaccinated and go. But the point is finding the, the places and the things to do that make it make sense. And now that everybody's kind of getting over the COVID thing, it's a great time to start planning. There's meetup groups out there available that you could take over and start hosting. There's ones that you can tap into that are starting to have events again. There's all these different places you can go that you can meet or create an opportunity. I was uh, like two weeks ago, I was in Vegas and there was somebody hosting an event at a restaurant in one of their spare room, big rooms. And I was like, okay, so that's back now, right? Like now there's actually people bringing 20 or 40 people in a restaurant locally and talking to them about whatever it is that you hosted the event about. So all that's available to you. Um, Having opportunities to share your information free lead magnets. You wrote a book. There was somebody I talked to the other day where a book would lend itself really well to them and what they're trying to achieve. And I told them, you got to talk to Sean because he's the one that can help you get the book, get on the podcast, get the word out there, do a launch, build a list. All these things come with the promotion of that book Mm -hmm. that gets you off in the right direction, good positioning. What's the story in the book about, right? And then that leads to you being a speaker. What are your what are your signature speeches or your core signature speech? What is your positioning and how does that support itself through the speech? What stories can you tell to support that? Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's right. huge. Signature talks are just, you gotta be known for something. It lends to positioning. Positioning is everything. Yeah. Like let's say I wanted to be positioned as um, the how to hire happy people expert. And I told everybody, hey, here's the secret to hire happy people. And then I published a book that I wrote years ago that somebody asked me to write for their for their uh, label that was like, what's the one lesson you learned from in and out? It's like hire smiles and train skills. Mm-hmm. If you hire happy people, you can teach them to do anything. You can't teach anyone how to be a happy person. That's a right. something from within thing, right? So if you hire happy people, you can train them to do just about anything. Right. You might not train them how to be an NBA basketball player, but you can certainly train them how to be a rocket scientist or a doctor or whatever, um, depending on their personality and their thought processes and their level of learning and the ability to have people around them to support them in that vision. It's all possible. So any any way that you can line yourself up to here's something I'm speaking about. Here's what I do to help people. Here's the positioning around it. And then what's my signature speech? And then you go back into your mind and you think about the things you've learned that helped you get those positions to speak on your, your thought processes, right? What, what they would call a thought leader platform. And then you're thinking about, okay, now that I know what that is, what stories can I tell to help illustrate that? And, and that's the key to getting it all recorded with good video, good lighting and good audio. Because every time you give those speeches, those little segments or what Greg Reed calls songs, they support you in the ability to show people what you can do and why they would want to book you on stage to be a speaker. And then those things allow you to market it, right? Because now you can promote, publish, or share video content. There's just little excerpts of the big speech that you give Mm -hmm. that get people to be like, oh, that would be perfect for us. I would love him to talk about that. Yes, um, love it. That's love all it. right. Like it, that's full circle on what it's doing. That's why it's so important to have that. Without that, people can't imagine. Well, I like his stuff, but I've never seen him speak. Versus, or she, 
I've never seen her speak versus like video of them. Like, Oh, I've seen them on stage multiple times, whether they saw you or not, like Sean's saying, your social media networks are a platform. Those are profiles where you're posting things. You can be posting video of you speaking and memes with your beliefs and long form posts and short excerpts and tweets and whatever platforms you want to be on lives, you know, Instagrams, whatever, lots of things you could do. Like I was looking through my uh, Google drive folder the other day, deleting stuff that I don't need to store anymore and deciding like which videos of all the interviews I did in the past, can we release on this podcast? And are they in here? And they were, there's a lot of them in there. There's like the John Lee Dumas one in there. That would be great. There's like the Ben Adkins one. That would be great. And so I was looking like, oh, what are all these different ones that we could put out that are like the long lost archives of kick-ass internet marketing uh, interviews of really cool people that know exactly what they're doing and execute extremely well at it uh, that I did like in 2015 and 2016 that mm -hmm. we could then put out there. So I'm digging through that stuff. Th that's allowing for a platform and a message and a belief and content and people do attach themselves to it. So as a speaker, you have to put it in the frame of you are the speaker, you're the one, you're the brand, you're the positioning that they're looking for. Your speech is the speech they're looking to hear. And they've gotten tastes of it through your reels and your social media content. Anybody that knows Sean, whether they've seen him in live, in person speak yet or not, has seen him speak. They've all seen it on his channels. So that's huge. Yeah. Man, you, you, you covered a lot of ground and so much value. My takeaway from that was the positioning and the signature taught you have to be known for something. You have to be known as what? And a lot of people that I talk to say, well, you know, I'm a mindset coach, which first of all, the first part of positioning would be to actually give you a positioning name title, whatever that creates a new category. So you're not a mindset coach and it's basically what problem do you solve? Yeah. Are you a men's mindset coach? Are you a men's marriage coach? Are you like, like who is your target audience? A lot of times your target audience, because everybody says, Oh, I can speak to anybody. I can speak to any topic about it. No, you can't. You think you can, but you can't. You literally, because if you try to speak to everyone, you'll hit no one. You'll speak to nobody. Yeah. Nobody wants to hire a general person. Everybody wants to hire a specialist. So you have to become a specialist. So instead of being a mindset coach, you could be a men's relationship mindset coach or a women's business mindset strategist or something. Even Tony Robbins a couple of years ago got rid of the motivational speaker thing and he's a master life strategist. He coined himself as something. I stopped talking about business coaching and went to business posi positioning strategist. That's what I'm known for. I started off as a master resilience implementer. I still talk about resilience and leadership and all that, but I don't want to be a relationship speaker or resilience speaker or mindset coach or something that a million other people are. You have to differentiate yourself. So differentiating yourself between having a signature talk that solves a key problem that reveals your target audience based on your title, your positioning. So if you're a men's mindset coach and a woman's like, Hey, I want you to speak at my event. It's up to you. If you want to do it you're like, well, I'm kind of a men's coach though, or a men's speaker or whatever. I wouldn't mind speaking at your event, but this is what I do. Or you and could be like a CEO communications coach. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. you could be like a CEO communication and problem solving expert. Yes. So that people are like, oh, if I'm a CEO, men or woman, and right. I need to bring in a consultant slash coach to talk to me, work with me, communicate right. with me about how I'm communicating with my team. So I get more out of them because I see a lot more potential in them and my opportunities with them than they're knowing, understanding, or realizing. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a positioning that puts you ahead of anyone else or outside of anyone else. I've been going through this right. exercise right now in my mind for the last couple of weeks with a client that I'm working with that we've done all the trucking for all the fire cleanups in California in the regions that they got contracted to do. Mm -hmm. And now they're ready to do websites 
digital media, advertising, and things that grow their direct decorative rock and landscape rock materials business. Oh, okay. So it's like, okay, if we're going to go that route, like I started mapping out, here's the 300 pages we can start building on the website first. <laughs> here's all the products you have. Here's the best keywords for these things. And so then we're looking at like, okay, how do we not be a decorative rock landscape materials business? How do we pick a fucking good category to own and design yeah. without infringing on the landscape design legality of you'd have to have a licensed architect with a bachelor's degree in landscape design mm -hmm. uh, to be able to claim that. Um, and, and then figuring out like, what is it that we can be to sell our three offers? One of them is going to be about the rebate you can get if you live in California and you put a drought free or drought resistant landscaping in your front yard, what can you uh, save? It's like a $2,000 rebate on whatever you spent. Mm -hmm. And then another offer for like a sample coupon of the product. And then another offer for like the contractor or landscaping company to receive a kit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the same idea, if you're a speaker, you have something to solve. You have a positioning. Sean's the expert at helping you nail down what that positioning should be for your niche so that you can go out there and build platforms like book, communication, memes, social media, all these things, video, what your signature speech is, what five stories can you use to tell that speech, all of that, right? Adding all that up is important. And then you take that and you do something powerful with it. What do you do with it? You acknowledge you have the clear vision of who you speak to what it is that they need you know how to deliver that in your speech that's why people are drawn to you you're creating the right promotional materials so that your brand and you as the speaker are wanted and sought after and people agree and acknowledge and comment and enjoy what it is that you're saying you're showing them displaying to them i'm not only talking about it here's me speaking on stage Here's a speaker real video. Here's a clip from somewhere I just spoke at. All of that adds to the, the validity of what it is that you're doing as a speaker to where you can command a fee for that, right? And then you do what Sean was saying where you're layering in that call for speaker alerts and notifications, the follow-up, the right kind of template and message that gets you speaking gigs and in conversations where people are paying you to speak. And then you're on stage and it's about delivering that signature speech and getting more footage of yourself and then delivering for the audience. So in the beginning, it's about connecting with them. It's about stunning them at first so you got their attention. And then it's about connecting with them and then making them laugh and then telling them a story. And then that helps lead you to what it is your speech is going to do to create an aha moment for them, which is the powerful thing you're trying to do as the speaker. And then at the end, you have an offer. So if your offer, instead of it being decorative rock, like how much can you save on a rebate and, and uh, get a free sample coupon, your offer for the speaker is fulfilling their need as the audience. And so you have some type of free download offer. You can have it as a text message or uh, an opt-in page, but I would recommend text keyword to number so you can get their phone number and, and they're on your list for text and then deliver them whatever you promise them. Uh, another thing you can do is have a paid download. Like Sean has a paid download for 27 bucks. He has a paid download for 49 bucks. There's lots of different paid downloads you can have. Bill Walsh teaches you to have a $9.99 a, a month download that at the end of the speech, not only are they gonna buy your paid lead magnet, but they're going to pay a monthly subscription which turns that initial sale into monthly recurring revenue. Um, and it keeps them a little more engaged with the regular schedule of content that goes out after they buy it for $9.99. And it gives them access to a core training lab where they can listen to and watch all this information. So have those offers, free lead magnet, text message uh, opt-in for the free lead magnet and some kind of paid offer small yeah. low ticket paid offer those are all things you can do from the stage have a book if you're an expert you have a signature speech and you have a book mm -hmm. and we talked about this in the past episode if you don't have a signature speech then alex mondozi the first words he ever told me when i said 
I want to be a speaker. He said, you have to have a signature speech. Otherwise, you're going to be forgettable. Mm -hmm. You're going to talk about way too many different things that don't make you the expert about the thing that you give the speech on. So don't do that to yourself. Right. When I taught at the library for two and a half years, I taught WordPress and SEO. It was eight classes at the end of the eighth class. The ninth class was class one. I would just, I had a signature speech. It just took me nine one hour segments to go through. Then I consolidated it all to the first one could cover all of the nine and get people to come back and listen to the next seven. So it's understanding that and then implementing it in a way that it works for the audience and for the platform. That's why having small little bite-sized things like Greg Reed calls them songs, you can piece together which ones belong to tell a certain story and create and invoke a certain emotion for the audience based on that audience and what they need. Like Sean could dip into his bag of speeches, long or short, and he could pull out the segments that talk about resilience mm -hmm. and whatever else, communication and discipline. And then he could explain all three of those in a speech if that's what the audience needed to hear. Um, and we've talked about this in the past, right? Like we wouldn't say it to them in a way that's talking about turn the next page if he was talking to a group of people that were young teenagers in a boxing gym. He would say like, get in the ring, take your chance, knock them out, you know? Right. Go until the bell rings, different set of language and communication. So knowing who you serve, knowing your positioning, knowing what your signature speech needs to be, all of those things lead you to the right stories, the right signature speech together, the format, whether you decide to use some frameworking or not, both like physically and also what you show the audience, like you could have a framework on there to walk the audience through to help teach them something. And then at the end, you're gonna have an offer. So you need to either have text message, opt-in page, some kind of offer, free and paid, have mm -hmm. both, have a book. Those are all things you wanna do. Because as, as you create those things with Sean, you have a book. That means you have a book launch coming. That means you have an email list you're going to build for the book launch that can also be invited to your next speech and, and so on. Next event, next thing you're speaking at, next place you're going to be. All that's go. huge. Huge, man. So let's talk about, real quick before we end the episode, leveraging your content to let people know who you are and what you stand for leveraging or, or even repurposing content like you said taking the snippet of the resilience piece and then putting it into a resilience video or a podcast part or a written whatever an article it could be an article even if you took that little video piece and transcribed it with all the transcription software out there repurposed it into an article and then put it on medium.com put it on quora send it to Forbes, send it to wherever, whatever, right? It shows and demonstrates that you are the thought leader of the category or an expert and what you would be as a speaker on state, like how you would be. I think that's why I think one sheets are dead. People look at a piece of paper and say, is this person good or not good? I don't know. But if you see video, because I've seen speakers, I'm like, wow, this guy's going to be really good. Amazing promo video amazing stage presence he walks out he's like hey like i'm like this guy's gonna be good and then he sucked his content was not good <laughs> and he said um like 84 times and then halfway <laughs> through he like started pitching and selling his face off which you're not supposed to do then he went over on his time and then he's like hold on i'm almost done and the speak and the event planner's like get like get off and people are like up there with the microphone like hand on the shoulder like it's time to go and he's like hold on i'm almost done you know, like it was just it was a bad experience and on paper he looked amazing in person sucked so how do you <laughs> leverage your content what should people be doing well i think i think if you have the video of you speaking you can take those a little make mini videos right so you have maybe you spoke for 15 minutes or half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour you have things in there you could pull out segments that you could then drip out on your social media. You can advertise those, right? Uh, you can find the golden nugget phrases and turn them into tweets and posts on Facebook. Mm -hmm. oh, you can put good. reflection content in about that thing and what it means to you. You can tell stories 
in written long form video, whatever you want about that on the podcast audio. Uh, you could do what you were showing me with the repurpose that I owe. You take the big thing and you get a little repurposed video out of it. You stick that here and there. There's lots of things you can do with that, both written and audio and video, if you have the good video. So you want the good lighting, the good video, the good audio. And then once you've identified like who it's for, if you want to put some money behind it, you could. But uh, there's a lot of things you can do just in terms of taking that piece of content from any one like you had said, you went to a library, you filmed yourself in three different shirts, giving three different parts of the speeches in three different corners of the room. And that was enough to get started. So don't overcomplicate things. Uh, make it as easy as you can on yourself. Having those assets is what gives you the edge to go forward and move on into the next phase, which is like talking about it, showing people you're doing it and then getting opportunities to speak at other people's events. So you're speaking in front of other people and that leads you back to the lead magnets because you got to get them on your list. So you can keep in touch with them. Mm -hmm. They saw you speak. They can tell their friends about it. They can recommend you to speak to someone else. All of that opens doors in your network. Yeah. Um, and the who it's for is why it's relevant to them, which is why you got to get the right kinds of positioning and stuff in place, the book, the offer, uh, all of that melds together. 100% man. Absolutely. One of the things that I do is we'll take parts of the podcast and we'll repurpose it into audiograms. One to three minutes, it's audio. And then we'll put that out on different on different places. We'll take parts of the talk, like a like a video of me speaking, whatever an event. We'll take just that key, like one to three minutes. We might write an article about it. It might be featured in wherever on YouTube or, you know, Instagram already said they're going to more video. They're going to start promoting a lot of video. <laughs> here's, a great, here's a great oh, idea man. that just came to mind because you're saying the one sheet is dead, right? Replace the one sheet with you filmed yourself or you had somebody film you as a great camera. You had good audio and the lighting was great and you got really good video out of it and you got plenty of it that you could chop it up. Film yourself doing that. Take that video and you stick it up on YouTube, the, the chop segments, right? And then you have some type of opt-in to listen to the whole episode, to the full speech, right? Get access to the full speech. Give me your name, email, phone number option. Now you got them on their list and all your little YouTube videos are lead magnets to get them on your list to listen to the full speech. Yep, then you take that. that video and you stick it on a post and you write content around it. And you write it in press release form and then you release it in the press. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's an easy way to promote it and get yourself notoriety, right? In the press release form. And it's got your video in there of you speaking and it's the teaser. And then you could put them out on all the different press release sites. Sean yeah. knows how to do all that stuff with the press releases oh, yeah. for you, oh, you know? So, so now you've got a new way that's replaced the one sheet. You could have positioning as a marketing company about that. You could be like, the one sheet is dead. What it's replacing with is whatever. Here's another idea. I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, we're going to have 10,000 downloads. We're going to have a pot, uh, podcast that's got almost 10,000 downloads. It's going to cross that mark. We're going to have a blog that's going to reward everybody and say, hey, not only can you listen to it wherever you've been listening, but now you can get to the blog. And then we can start writing blog posts that are kind of like the newsletters that block has writing about things that we think about. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and instead of calling it a blog or a vlog, we could call it a pog. And <laughs> everybody knows what a pog is, but yeah. it's different. So they know yeah. the name it's familiar to them, but it's a pog. Well, what's a pog? We're the first creators of a pog. No one else in the world has ever made a pog. Well, what's a pog? It's a podcast blog. You're not going to find any video there. Right. You have to listen to the video somewhere else around a social media site or something, but you're going to find the newsletter style blog posts and you're going to find the episodes and you're going to find the show notes. So we've created a pop. Now, will we actually so do that? Hold on. I got to stop something that we, you for a second. We, hold on a second. So in the military, we have challenge coins. Okay. 
So I've seen them wooden. I've seen them like regular, like nineties pogs, like plastic, you know, or like, you know, cardboard paper, whatever, mostly metal, mostly kind of right. So we could create our own pog, right. <laughs> and like bring that thing back and like, you know what I mean? So like, if you're ever in an event and on one side, you have the circle piece that is our logo, the create launch monetized logo in the shape of a circle. And then on the back side, you have your, your contact information and how to listen to the show, a website, email, whatever. And now that's like your own like business card for your podcast and you just create a pog and you just give your pogs out to everybody. And now, <laughs> hey, they've yeah. got it, now they've got something to carry around with them. You know what I mean? Boom. Yeah. And depending oh, how much control you have over your own event as a speaker, you could very easily make that an interactive game for all the audience members. Like, Hey, you remember pogs stack them all up in the middle, hit them with the slammer yeah. and whatever falls over, whoever wins, we're going to pick a winner. Whoever ends up with the most pogs at the end of this, this little challenge right now is going to come yes. up and win a copy of my book. Like, yes. and then everybody's got a pog, take one of those pogs with you. And you got a slammer that says I was one of the people that listened to the first 1000 episodes yep. of, of uh, create launch monetize, right? Like all of yep. these things allow you the opportunity to create opportunity. Um, so it's about, it's about making it unique, <laughs> like so rather than having a vlog or a, a blog, we'll have a pod. <laughs> <laughs> so. Dude, I love it. Right. Cool. Oh man, I freaking love it. And you're just leveraging the content. Man, yeah, because so think about good. it. If you wrote a book and you're an expert speaker and you have a signature speech, you could very easily just have a podcast that talks about the segments of your book. And you could just go through all that stuff. Like Sean is a speaker. He could give you parts of his speeches, different speeches for different audiences, yeah. different pieces of his lead magnets. He can teach from that stuff. He can uh, uh, overall give you like a, a overview, a, a 10,000 foot view of it. And then he can give away the opportunity to download or sell you on the idea of buying the $27 or $49 thing. Mm -hmm. And all of that qualifies you into a better position of, of customer that's paying you versus freebie seeker. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The coolest thing that I've seen on stage is somebody on the projector and the big screen put up a QR code and they said, click this QR code and you're entered into a drawing or download my book, my guide, whatever, by snapping this QR code and he flashes it on the screen and he's everybody and everybody's got their phones up. Click, click. I mean, they're just, and can you imagine if you had like a thousand person event and you just added a thousand people to your, to your email list, something else I saw was <laughs> that, and, and I don't remember, I'm gonna have to go back and look at the video, but a guy had some kind of a, uh, some kind of a game or some kind of a, like he had a program, like an app, like on his phone. And, you know, it's kind of like roll me a dice, you know, that type of thing. But it was like, you know, asking questions and then giving answers. And it was like, kind of like a, like a game. I can't remember what the heck it was, but it was like the <laughs> coolest thing. And you can get surveys done that way. You can get, I mean, you can see like, Hey, right now I'm going to ask you three questions. And I need you to QR code this thing. Boom, you're on their email list. And then I want you to, to answer these three questions. What is the most important thing you're looking for right now? And maybe you have like four choices, right? Each question has like four choices. And if there's an overwhelming 80% here, 70% there, whatever, you can really hit on that content, kind of glaze over and kind of touch on the other stuff you were going to talk about, but really focus on the audience needs right then and there live. I think that is an amazing way to really take your content and leverage it and sell and get clients. I mean, I want to leave an event with people in the audience saying, what else can you do? Yeah. What else do you do? Because they can hire you for an event. <laughs> you know they what can else hire you to speak, coach, that. whatever. Two things. One, if you leave them in a situation where it's like you told them before you started, we have a lot to cover in a little bit of time. So forgive me. I'm going to hold the questions till the end. I might have time for one or two, but I want to over deliver for you guys. So no matter what, if you have any questions, we're going to have a live training tomorrow night. You just sign in and you can ask all the questions that you didn't get 
get to ask today about the presentation I'm going to do. Is that a deal? Great. Here's how you do it. So now you've yeah. got them meeting you again tomorrow mm -hmm. while it's fresh and you get the Q&A so you can record that. So now you get everybody asking you questions, you give them answers. The other thing that I thought of when we were talking about all this stuff is Zach Spuckler, extremely good at having a business page, a challenge offer or some type of offer leads you to going to the business page, liking the post, clicking on the link in the comment, going to the Facebook group, joining the Facebook group, opting in once you're accepted, going to the first post, committing to making a video to tell who you are and why you're doing the challenge. And then from there, he's got all the content to feed you for the rest of the challenge. Right. And he's moved you through the whole entire process. He still offers this to people nowadays. And, and it's like, how powerful is that sequence? Especially if you're a speaker and you've made two or three of those in your cycle and you've built mm -hmm. clientele from it because when they're done with the challenge, you're gonna make them an offer to work with you to do whatever it is that you've been helping them along in the challenge to do on a yep. more higher level from A to B. Not only can you do that, but as a speaker, you get a couple of those under your belt and you get the machine working. Then you go on stage and you offer everybody there to join the challenge. Now they've walked into a Facebook group full of people that say how much they're excited. This is working. This is who they are. All of these things help you snowball the activity you're doing as a speaker. Mm -hmm. Huge. Back to you, Sean. <laughs> The pregnant pause. <laughs> oh, we didn't cover the pregnant pause. Sean touched on it earlier in the episode. The power of the pregnant pause, like mm -hmm. asking them something or saying it in a certain cadence and then pausing yep. and letting them think about it. 100%, man. Man, I love this episode so much, so much value. What I want to offer everybody right now, it'll be in the podcast show notes, it's in the comment in our facebook live i got a guide the top ways to get you booked consistently every single time with no one sheet just practicality go to bit.ly forward slash get booked to speak capital g capital b capital t capital s that's our differentiating factor capital g b t and s get booked to speak bit.ly forward slash get booked to speak with the capital g b t and the S for speaker. Join us every single week on Create, Launch, Monetize podcast, where we talk to you about creating, launching, monetizing podcasts, books, speakers, offline, online businesses, coaching programs, product services. We give it all away. We give you all the value, what's working, what's not. And if you need a website, if you need some advertising, contact Anthony. He is a gangster on creating your websites that convert and make sales and increase revenue and positioning you on the internet. I position the businesses, the podcasts, the speakers, all that stuff, online, offline, all that. Contact Anthony, contact myself. We'll get you in touch with the right people at the right time. We'll connect you with our team and we will get you positioned and get you crushing it for the rest of 2021 and beyond. Anthony, always a pleasure to do business with you. Always a pleasure to do these podcast episodes, man. You are a rock star and I just appreciate you so much, my man. Uh, I love you too, man. You're doing awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, having me on again. It's, it's an honor to be a part of this, helping everybody cut through the bullshit and get down to actually implementing for their business yes. in ways that work for them. Absolutely, man. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for downloading the episode. Go rate us on Apple Podcasts. Show us some reviews. Show us some of them stars. Comment, whatever. Send us an email at info at create launch monetize.com info at create launch monetize.com give us any questions that you have we'll do our best to answer them and until next time take care